If you could open up your lesson materials and go to the portfolio page, just open it up in Chrome. Like I said earlier, we're not going to be doing any IDE work today. We're not going to be editing our code directly. Instead, I'm going to show you how to use the Chrome developer tools, which along with being incredibly useful for watching your code run, uh, also have uh, instant feedback, which is, we'll call it fun. I don't mind calling it fun. This is the page, how it's going to look when we're done with it. Title at the top, we've got a lovely little portfolio running of all of the pictures from today's lesson. It's not what it looks like right now. Right now, this is what it looks like. Uh, page title section's there, but it looks a little different. The uh, images are all there, but they're all just stacked up on each other. And that copyright footer is, well, we're not gonna do anything with that. So that guy's still there. Now we're gonna use the Chrome developer tools to really dig into this page uh, and get some stuff done. At any time you've got code or a structure of some kind, and it's running in a black box, it's tough to get a look at it inside. It's tough to see what's happening on the inside. You can put things in, in there. You can put in debugger lines. You can pop up alerts and stuff. There's ways to get information out of that black box. It's annoying and it's not fun. And there are cases where it just can't give you the information that you need. So anytime that you have access to a debugger where you can watch your code run, where you can pause it and check values in the middle of running, you are going to automatically increase your effectiveness as a developer by a factor of some very large number. So right now I'm going to introduce you to the Chrome debugging tools and have you do the most important thing that you're ever going to do with a right click. Please go up to the top on or next to the page title, right click and select inspect element. This is the DOM inspector here, which looks over your HTML. Here's the element we're looking for. We are going to need to select it by ID, which means we need to find the ID. And there it is. Um, I put it helpfully right in the element, but let's not cheat. Now, along with this guy showing up, you'll see that the entire rest of your page is in here as well. And this looks like the HTML that got fed into your page, but it's not just text, it's live. This stuff is real. You can, for example, you can add or uh, you remove class names, you can change the IDs of things, stuff like that. So this is great. We're, we're going to spend a lot more time in this later, but I want to just give you a quick glimpse of it right now. Now up here, resources, network sources, timeline, we've got some other advanced stuff, stuff that's really useful once you've got um, a big weighty chunk of code running and you need to optimize it. But the thing that we're going to look at right now is the console. So if you click on that for me. Now this is effectively a command line interface with your application. You can write commands here and hit enter and they'll be executed just as though they were going on in your actual code. For example, it'll pop up a little alert greeting. Now that's not super interesting, but you can do more complicated commands and you actually have access to the full inner life of your application, all of the global variables, all of these things. And since this is a jQuery lesson, I included jQuery in this page. Let's take a look at it. I'd like you to type dollar sign uh, and then hit enter. You may have to hit enter twice. Now this dollar sign, this little simple symbol is jQuery. It's your window into this whole world of introspection and plugins and all of these things that we've been talking about. Everything starts with the dollar sign. Now, as you can see here, the dollar sign is a function, but just to tease a little bit of some of the stuff we're covering later on, I want you to type dollar sign and then dot. And then using the dot notation, you can see here that thanks to the magic of JavaScript, jQuery is also an object and it's got a bunch of stuff on there. Anyway, we'll go over that later. As a function, the dollar sign's primary role is to select elements. And that's what we're showing you right now. And by the way, that's what you're going to be quizzed on later on. Let's start with an ID. First thing we want to do is we want to select this element with a page title. Uh, so drop in the hashtag, then page dash title, and hit enter. Now this has selected that element for us. There it is. Now this hashtag thing, pound sign for uh, anyone that's not in the Twitter universe, that probably looks familiar to you, right? If you've used CSS, then it should look very familiar to you. This is just a plain old CSS selector. Use the pound sign or the hashtag for ID. If you want to select it by tag name, just do the name of the tag. 
And just to prove that this is really CSS selectors at work, you can even chain them together like this. So H3 ID page title. This is going to select all level three headings with an ID of page title. There it is. Now, let's do something with this guy. Uh, you'll notice that it returns the element, but it returns it inside an array. And that's not just an array. That's a special augmented jQuery array, which has a whole bunch of other things to it. For example, text. Text is going to pull out the stuff that's inside. And again, this isn't something that we're quizzing you on today. We'll just tease you a little bit for some of the stuff that we're going to cover next time. Now let's change that text. Let's change it to lesson one portfolio and hit enter. And there you go. It's been changed. Uh, by the way, if you want to get to the previous, you'll notice I've been typing very fast. What's actually happening is that if you hit the up button uh, on your keyboard while in the console, you'll go to the previous command and you can edit that. It's very useful for when you're iterating quickly over, uh, over similar commands. So we've now updated the title section of our page. Let's do something else. Let's say we want to select all the elements that have the class image wrapper. There they are. I wrapped each one of these uh, images in a div, gave it some CSS positioning, just so it'd be a little prettier and line up. We're not actually gonna do anything with those. Instead, we are going to grab the slideshow element again by ID. There it is. It's got the whole thing. It's got all these images stacked up inside it. The uh, way that we access the different CSS uh, styles of this element is with the CSS command. Uh, so let's say .css background color. And if you just say that, it's going to tell you what it currently is. There's the default value of nothing. But let's change it to white using a second argument there. Boom. Now it's white. Uh, now just to make it look a little prettier, let's give it a white border as well. 2px solid white. And now it's got a little bit of a border in there. One last thing, and this is the magic of jQuery plugins. If we wanted to turn this thing into an actual slideshow ourselves, it would take a lot of effort. But since I included the cycle plugin on this page, this is all you have to do to turn this stack of images into a slideshow. And with that, we've turned some very simple HTML into a nice, sophisticated slideshow widget. That took three commands on the slideshow element. So let me show you a fun thing you can do with jQuery. Anytime you've got a jQuery uh, selector or action method, for example, this returns some elements. And then if you want to set the background color to white, this guy also returns the impacted elements. What that means is that you can do this cool thing called chaining. It's standard in jQuery. It's something that you're going to get used to quickly, but the first time you see it, it looks a little weird. Um, it took me some time to get used to this when I first started out. So let's chain all of these commands together. We're going to select the element. We're going to change the border. We're going to change the background color. All in one command. Ready? There it is. Now, chaining is great for doing a few things. It'll often allow you to do stuff without declaring an extra variable, things like that. It's really nice. Chaining, however, also opens up the possibility for you to write a single line of code which does 16 million different things. That's a bad idea. So don't do it. There's a balance to be had there like anything else, and we'll be touching a little bit later on in the course about keeping your code neat and clean. That would definitely be an example of unneat, unclean code. But just for now, I want you to have a look at chaining because it's probably the best example of very low level ways that jQuery changes the way that you write JavaScript. Things with jQuery code that has jQuery in it just looks and feels a little bit different. Uh, and once you're used to it, that's for the best. So to review. The dollar sign is jQuery, right? It's your window into jQuery's view on your website. It's both a function and an object, which is a fact that has implications that we'll explore more later. 
as a function, if you pass a string, it's going to return a jQuery list of matching elements. And that string is just a CSS selector using the CSS notation that you're familiar with. For example, if you want to select all the elements of a certain tag, just pass in the name of the tag. If you want to select by ID, you use the hashtag. Uh, and if you want to select by classes, you use the dot notation. And just like CSS, you can mix and match and use hierarchical selectors and get very specific with the elements that you're selecting. Here, for example, we're selecting uh, an image element that is the child of an element with, you know, these two particular classes. And finally, merely an element of note at this time. Don't forget that you can change a query result list. It returns a list of objects, which can then have further, you know, jQuery things done to them. Well, that's it for today. I have a couple of homework assignments for you. As you're going through them, please make liberal use of the pause button. Uh, first up, I've got a short selector quiz in your class materials. And secondly, for next time, please review the selectors. There's a great documentation page at oscartero.com slash jQuery. On that page, please review the basic and hierarchy selectors. Uh, if you got any questions or run into any issues, just jump on the forum. We'll see you there. And uh, we'll see you next time in lesson two, that certain sparkle. Uh, this is jQuery Building Blocks, five techniques to cut your web development time in half. This is an Aquint production.